Don't let Congress mess up your credit cards and checking accounts. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Congress just can't resist the itch to muck around in areas it should just stay away from. It is mulling an idea to slap controls on what credit card issuers can charge merchants when you use plastic to buy something. Proponents say these so-called swipe fees are too high. By putting caps on them, as well as empowering retailers, not you, to choose the payment network for each card, consumer retail prices, they say, will go down at the expense of big banks. The reality, however, is that buyers will see no price reductions. The money saved will go into the pockets of big retailers. Banks will try to recover the lost revenue from lower swipe fees by charging higher fees for checking accounts or jacking up minimum deposits, as well as charging more for insufficient funds and inactive accounts. They'll also reduce rewards for credit card customers. Fees for late payments will go up, as will interest charges on unpaid credit card balances. In short, Big merchants will get extra money at the expense of banks and credit card customers. How do we know this will happen? Because that's what took place with a similar act with debit cards over a decade ago. Back in 2010, Senator Durbin, a Democrat from Illinois, successfully imposed caps on fees banks could charge merchants for debit card transactions. These charges were slashed by 45 percent, costing banks billions of dollars a year. By one calculation, the Durbin move has cost credit card issuers a total of over $100 billion. No surprise, banks try to recover the lost revenue with higher prices elsewhere. Moreover, in a classic case of unintended consequences, some merchants ended up with less money than before. Before Durbin's move, many banks charged credit card fees on a sliding scale. That is, a consumer price for, say, an item of $3.50 might incur a swipe fee of six cents. After Durbin, a number of banks charged the new maximum of 21 cents per transaction. Under the new proposal, in addition to caps on credit card swipe fees, merchants could choose a payments network other than the one used by your credit card. Jeff Tassi, chairman of the Electronics Payments Coalition, aptly compares this to you buying, say, a can of Coca-Cola from a vending machine and ending up getting a can of RC Cola. Quote, when you use your credit card, you naturally expect the rewards you signed up to get. End quote. But that might not be the case if this new credit card proposal goes through. Congress should cease meddling here, particularly as the rise of blockchain technology promises radical, cost-reducing changes in our whole financial payment systems in coming years. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions, and I look forward to being with you soon again.